Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about K-means clustering. K-means clustering is an unsupervised technique that requires no labeled response for the given input data. No labeled response means we don't have to specify the target variable or the dependent variable. If you are following my lecture series, you are aware that in all my previous video, I discussed about supervised learning algorithms where we have to specify the label, that is, we have to set the role. Here, it is not necessary. K-means clustering is a widely used approach for clustering. K-means clusters the data points into unique, non-overlapping groups. It uses a centroid. K differently randomly initiated points are picked up in the data and assigns every data point to the nearest centroid. After every point has been assigned, the centroid is moved to the average of the all points assigned to it. Now, how we are doing it? Let's see. Now, how this algorithm runs? First, decide on the value of k. We will have to specify the value of the k. Initialize the k cluster centers randomly. Decide the class membership of the n objects by assigning them to the nearest cluster center. Re-estimate the k cluster center by assuming the membership found above are correct or not. If none of the n objects change membership in the last iteration, then we will uh, the iteration will stop. Otherwise, go to the step number three. Don't worry, we don't have to pro do this process manually. The rapid minor processor will do do it for you. Now let's see what actually how it is running. Suppose this is our data point. We assign K1, K2, K3 centroids to this data point. So now the data has been divided into three groups. Now the iteration process will start. The Euclidean distance will be calculated and we will try to minimize the distance between this. So K1, K2 and K3 will move towards the center. In step four, again, the Euclidean distance is counted and K1 and K2 and K3 will try again try to minimize it once the distance is minimized then the iteration process will stop now how we are doing this in rapid minor let us see now i'll bring the data set empty cars i'll connect this spline with the result window i'll press the play button and you can see here the attributes which are there in our data set model mpg miles per gallon of the car, number of cylinders, displacement, horsepower, displacement rate, weight of the vehicle, q set, vertical and straight engine, VS is vertical and straight engine, EM is automatic and manual transmission, gear is number of gears, and number of carburetors. Now make sure that we don't enter any nominal variable into the algorithm. So again, we will go in design, and this time we will select the attribute operator. We'll drag it and drop it here. Now I'll have to select some attributes. I'll go here, subset it, select attributes. Now those attributes which are nominal and string variables are not selected. So I'll remove AM. Gear. You can see the icons on the basis of this. You can do it. I'll remove the model from here because it's a string variable. Let let us keep all other things as it is and apply. Now, next thing which I have to do is clustering. So I'll pick up K-means cluster from here. here. So when I'll activate this k-means cluster, you can see it is asking me that you want to segment into how many clusters. So at present, I'll specify two, give me the two cluster solution. So clustering will be done on the basis of Euclidean distance. Now we require the performance operator of this clustered solution. So for this, again, I will go here and activate the performance. Now make sure this time that you select 
performance of clustered solution so just scroll and try to find out so we'll consider cluster distance performance and we'll drop it here now make sure that you connect cluster clustering model with the clustered performance and clustered set with the example i'll also introduce one more operator that is normalizing the data normally in cluster analysis you may have variables that may be running in different scales some may be in five digits some may be in one digit and therefore it is necessary to bring all of them on the same same scale and therefore i will activate the normalize operator here i'll pass this plant into example to example and this plant i'll bring it here so now the process is ready i'll also take the output of performance to result example to result and cluster to result now when i run this algorithm it will give me the output you can see here that in cluster 0, 17 items are there, in cluster 1, 15 items are there. You can go in example set and you can and you can find out that the first ID is in which cluster. So each case is identified and it, and it and the output is given that it is in which cluster. So you can see here that the fourth the fourth car which is there is assigned to cluster 0 and fifth car is assigned to cluster 1. Now you can go in statistics and you can also visualize the cluster solution which is there 0, cluster 0 and cluster 1. How many are there in cluster 0 and cluster 1? You can again go in visualization and activate the scatter bubble and here make it weight and uh, mpg possible mpg and activate the cluster from here size is there size make it horsepower and you can activate the linear regression so two cluster solutions it is giving c cluster zero and cluster one okay again you can go in scatter 3d plot from here and you can see how nicely it is segregating the two clusters. If you want, you can do some changes here also. Now you will go in cluster modeling. And these are the folders which are given for cluster 0 and cluster 1. When you will press this arrow, you will come to know which are the observation numbers in cluster 0. When you will click on it, it will give you the name of the attribute, the ID, its weight, the normalized value. For each and every cases, it will give it to you. You can see here. Now you can go in graph, double click. And here also it will display you which are the cases in first cluster and which are there in second cluster. Now you can see it gives you the information. See. That number of items are 15 and ratio is 46.88 percentage. This information also is given from here. You can change the layout if you want, tree, height, or radial, whatever way you want to represent the cluster it can be done. Now you go in centroid table. Now this algorithm will give you the attribute according to the importance. The first one is highly important because you will have to consider the distance from plus to minus okay so plus to minus if this distance is more then this attribute is you can say highly significant in contributing towards creating the cluster and if the difference is less then this attribute is not at all contributing 
So you have to see the value from plus to minus, plus to minus. If the difference is more, then that attribute is contributing. Now it is not possible for us to see for so many attributes and therefore you can directly go into the plot and where the distance is more. See, the distance between cylinder, that is between first cluster and the second cluster, so blue one, cluster zero and red one, cluster one. So if this difference is more, it means that the centroid's distance is more in between these two and therefore cylinder displacement and horsepower are the most significant attributes in creating the clusters. Now the biggest question which arises is how much cluster solution we should, we should keep? Now there are two methods. First, the researcher has to take a call that what should be the value of k. So it depends upon data, that the data is from which industry. If you are dealing with fashion industry and you want to see the cluster, uh, cluster solution according to the gender, you will keep k is equal to 2. If the data is from any company and if there are three job categories, then you will keep uh, uh, k is equal to 3. So this is the first way in which a researcher can take a call. The second method is that you will go in this result performance factor and you will see the average centroid distance, overall average within centroid distance. If you go on increasing this one, this one, average first one, if you go on increasing the value of k, this value will come down. See, let us try. I increase this solution to 3 and I will run and I got the result, you can see this value is decreasing. So, you will have to plot from 1 to 3 and specify that what is the, what is the average within centroid distance. So, the average centroid distance was considered by running for k is equal to 2, 3, 4, and the average distance was noted down from here. You can confirm this thing from here also. If I increase this distance to 8, let us see. I'll go here and specify this as 8 and run the algorithm. Performance vector. You can see it is decreasing continuously, it is decreasing. So once you are having this distance, you will note down this distance here and you will draw the graph of it. Now, it will happen at one moment of time that the further increase in centroid will not decrease the di average distance between these two groups. So, after reaching an optimum level, even if you increase k, average centroid distance does not decrease. So, for different values of k, average centroid distance is computed. Reasonably, k should be in the range of 2 and 4. Otherwise, there will be overfit which will be happening. Let us see what will happen. If I specify eight clusters, let us go here in performance vector, yeah, here, and see the plot directly. Needless to say, there is so much overlapping which is happening, and therefore we are not in the position to identify. So, if you go on increasing the number of uh, clusters, there will be a lot of overlapping which will happen and it will, you will not get an optimum cluster solution. So let us see what happens if we keep this thing at 3. We are getting reasonable, good solution because cylinder is able to segregate 1, 2 and 3 and there is no overlapping. Equally, displacement is also able to do it and horsepower is also able to do it. This is a three cluster solution. Now, after doing this, you will go in folder view and you will see all these cases which are there. All these cases which are there and you will try to give name to this cluster 0, cluster 1 and cluster 2. Now, it is, if it is not possible for you to visualize this thing, there is one another method. And that is cluster visualization. 
Let us see how we can do this. Again, we will go in design. We will remove this performance window and activate cluster visualizer from here. I'll simply drag it and drop it here. Disconnect this lines and connect cluster with cluster. I'll connect visualizer with the result window and model with the result window. In clustering solution, make sure that this is two. I'll run it. Now the thing which you have to see is a cluster model visualizer object. You see how nicely it has given the representation. The cluster zero is having 17 cases. Cluster one is having 15 cases. So VES is a vertical or straight engine is on an average 88.24% larger. Cylinder is on an average 67.73% smaller. So here in cluster zero, uh, you can say those cars which are having one because vertical and straight engine is there. So those cars which are have, which are coded as one vertical. Cylinder, less cylinders, displacement, less cylinder, less displacement are there in cluster zero. And in this, VS is on an average 100% smaller. So here, those cars which are straight, here vertical and here straight. Cylinder is larger, here cylinder is smaller, displacement is larger. And therefore, you are able to give the name to it that what should be the name of those cars which are vertical then small cylinders and displacement smaller. Now, let us see what happens if I make this clustering solution to be three. And I'll run it. Again, I'll go in visualizer. And so zero, one, two. So now horsepower comes into the picture, right? So let us go back in design. And let me show you something more. I'll activate the clustering, make this as two. I'll run this and I'll go in centroid charts. We have seen centroid table also, we have seen scatter plot. Yeah. Now, just see what happens if the jittering, I, I do the jitter amount, I increase the jitter amount. So, See how nicely the clustering has been done. Try to recall what we had done in theory, right? It, it tries to find out the nearest centroid. See, at present, the overlapping is done. After running the algorithm, see, the classification has been done so nicely. So this is a way clustering algorithm works. For more lecture on rapid minor, Kindly subscribe to my channel. You can see my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos of Rapid Miner. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to press the like button.